Hello everyone, welcome to the last day of IndieX 2021. Today we have a great day full of great talks um, and we are going to start with Gary Burchell that's here today with us. Uh, he's going to talk about herding cats organizing game dev festivals. Okay, um, Gary, hello, how are you? Good, thank you. How about you? Oh, very well, thank you. So, I'll give you the stage, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, my name is Gary Birchall, and um, I am a, a, a director of a, a indie micro studio um, based in the UK called Fireblade Software. Um, I think it was 2018 that we um, uh, took uh, Abandoned Ship, our first um, release to uh, IndieX and um, it was a great festival and uh, it was really lovely to meet the team and, and lots of, of local players um, and yeah so um, that was back when um, events were primarily physical because it was pre-pandemic times um, and of course uh, with everything that's been going on since then uh, more and more events have kind of shifted online to have either a very strong or a primary sort of digital focus over kind of uh, physical events and you know ho hopefully those physical events will um return in in time um but i think kind of the the digital aspects always gonna um be a part of uh, sort of events futures now um but yeah so um one of the issues that indie developers have which you you, you know probably hear a lot about is um kind of talking about uh, visibility and making sure that your your game gets seen by people um it's a constant challenge for for indie developers and, and everyone's trying to kind of fight for people's attention um so um I'm, I'm quite lucky in that um where i'm based um and there's there's only about four or five of us um that work in the studio but we're all working remotely um but where I'm based and, and where the company's um, based is in Guildford. Um, now, my, maybe not many people outside the kind of UK games industry really know this, but Guildford's sort of like a, a really um, like hotbed of, of development talent. Um, I, I don't know, is that something you're, you're aware of? Uh, I, I am only aware uh from your uh, festival and by meeting you right okay well so yeah ex exactly so um yeah it's it's um it's something that's not really widely known and and i think kind of looking back at um kind of like the the history of guildford um you kind of go back to um sort of peter molyneux starting bullfrog which obviously you know made a lot of very very classic games and it started this cycle um you know where um i think eventually when when um uh, bullfrog um kind of just phased out of existence um there were so many developers that were kind of part of that um and when ea bought them ea kind of came to towards the area um that there was all this development talent that then started their own things and um you know that the cycle repeated itself i guess with with lionhead um because when they um were closed again there was loads of development talent um and so yeah they kind of spread out and, and formed all these, these indie studios so um yeah this this cycle of of studios um getting quite big and going under and then a bunch of indie studios um arising and of course because um when you've got a a big studio um you need kind of developers to, to work on the games and that pulls in people and then other companies move in so um yeah guildford's got really um sort of high concentration of of developers and, and publishers in, in the area so um this was something that um a few years ago that uh, we wanted to kind of um leverage as a community into something that you know let's let's shout about um guildford's history in, in gaming terms and um you know how can we leverage that how can we kind of put it more to a, a global audience and and um like a, a 
the game festival alongside an accompanying steam page was was a way that um we thought we could a- achieve that so um the um you know you'd speak to a lot of people um even in guildford that are not gamers or not interested in gaming or or, or maybe, maybe they even are gamers um and uh, they just don't realize that the games that are made here you know um so really really quite big titles you know you've you've got uh you know media molecule and you've got criterion and the ea studios there um you've got uh hello games um you know super massive um these are just sort of the big studios there currently and, and there's countless uh smaller studios like us that are um uh, are there kind of uh, creating to the, the indie scene as well so re- really sort of good breadth of of um games from like big triple a titles to you know one-man bands making games in 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 their bedroom sort of thing um so yeah the, the festival was kind of designed to kind of um really talk about this and it was a a while ago now but there was a local newspaper uh, sorry a national newspaper that um was talking about um the guildford gaming scene and and i think the journalist mentioned like uh it, it's a bit like the hollywood of games in guildford um i'm not a personal fan of that term but um it's certainly something that kind of was was seized upon and, and we were like well yeah let's 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 talk about this aspect um so um what i'm really involved in is um the steam side of the guildford games festival um but there is a festival organization committee um that i think the first year we did it was a physical event in a local venue and um you know we, we had uh, like a developer day where um you know uh, publishers and developers would come and, and do talks and stuff um and then there was a, a public day where we had kind of loads of stands you know a, a bit like um you know uh, physical games fest- festivals like um so we um we did that and it was um you know it was a really big success and it kind of encouraged the the festival organization committee to um to, to go again and then the pandemic hit um so obviously everything shut down and um we, we still wanted to do something um you know we wanted this to be a, an annual thing not a one-off um so um the the festival team basically organized um uh, a lot of um sort of video content um you know developer interviews um and, and you know uh round tables and, and and stuff like that and that was something that um you know it was, it was really well professionally shot uh, very very high quality and the intention was um m- much like you're you're doing here with indiex um you know broadcast it on twitch and um you know just just kind of make as as much a, a thing of it as as we can kind of separately from that and i touched on like uh visibility and, and things like that um as an indie developer like um we're all doing it uh, but I, I do it too is, is i'm constantly looking for opportunities to kind of basically get um my game some visibility um you know it's, it's primarily on steam but that's that's where the lion's share of the the pc market is um and um i'd kind of seen this this ever-growing trend of of what's called cross publisher sales on steam so I'm sure everyone who frequents Steam has, has seen them where basically you, um, you know, there'll, there'll be a, a capsule somewhere in Steam that uh, talks about some sort of festival or another. Um, and you, you click on it um, and uh, it takes you to a page full of, of games from different publishers around, like whether it's a theme or an event. Um, but uh, if those sort of um, capsules appear on the front page, of, of steep then um you get a hell of a lot of traffic um so it, it's it's really attractive for for developers and, and publishers to kind of have have these pages Gary, so we, yes we do, we do have a question for from our audience already yeah okay asphodel is asking can you pinpoint what happened in the past to make especially guildford 
a video games creation hub? Um, I think really it, it all started with Bullfrog. Um, so, you know, uh, I can't remember, you know, I guess it was in the late eighties, early nineties, um, where the, the game started really to, to hit a nerve. And, um, yeah, that was, uh, that for me was where everything began, really everything spun off from there. From Bullfrog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think everyone else has just kind of been building on their, their platform ever since really. Um, but yeah, I made some great games uh, that I absolutely loved. Spent many hours of my youth playing theme park and, <clears throat> and populous. Um, but yeah, so um, these these cross publisher sales um, were something that the um, uh, I think Ludo Narrowcon was one of the first ones I saw from somebody that wasn't Valve. And um, but you know Valve would occasionally host their own ones as, as well. And um, anyway, this started to be something you know uh, a trend that that people were doing more and more and more of. And I was kind of looking at this really quite awesome content that the the Guildford Festival Committee were were making. Um, but I knew that you know, just by its very nature, we'd have quite a very limited reach of of who would watch this stuff. Um, and I kind of at the same time was sort of thinking about, you know, ways that we could um, basically kind of push that into a global spotlight, um, something that's also going to try and have like a, a really tangible impact on on kind of the, the people that participate, you know, particularly indies. Um, and, you know, um, I wasn't thinking of this entirely selflessly. I was like, well, you know, if, if we had something like that themed around Guildford that, um, you know, then Abandoned Ship would be part of that and, and we'd benefit from that. And, and our next game, Century, would, um, you know, would, would benefit from that as well in, in terms of wish lists. So um, it felt like a, a um, kind of a win-win situation for, for everyone, really. So um, I approached... Uh, somebody on the the committee that I knew, a guy called Sam Reed, um, and I kind of floated this idea. And at that point, it was quite speculative because um, you know I hadn't approached Valve about this. Um, yeah, you know, I hadn't spoken to any other developers, but um, you know it's, it's got to start somewhere, right? So um, he was really bought into the idea, um, and interestingly, I I so I, I you know. I'm really busy and, and doing this was a, a big time sink um, and uh, I didn't have the time or kind of want to kind of be part of the main festival organization committee because they were doing their thing and it was great. Um, they didn't need me. They didn't need another voice or anything like that. So, um, but this steam thing, I was like, I can, can run with this. Um, and uh, Sam was, was really bought into the idea. Um, I think interestingly at the time from what I sort of have heard anecdotally that everyone else on the committee was kind of like yeah sure go you know do, do the steam thing um and didn't really quite um sort of understand the um the, the gravity that it could have if it was successful um and of course they, they were busy you know they had their own things to do um as i'm sure you yourself know uh, organizing these sorts of things is very time consuming um indeed yeah so um yeah that's um that's where it sort of very very first started and um after that it's kind of a bit like a chicken and egg scenario because um what you're ultimately working towards is a page that's got all these awesome games on it um that gets some level of featuring um and has discounts or whatever so it's a real kind of event that kind of coincides with your festival um but to get there it's it's um really quite tricky to know where to start because um you'll only be successful if you've got lots of good games and um you know and if, if they're offering discounts and things like that so it's um you know but do you talk to everybody first to get their buy-in and then approach valve do you approach valve first to see if this is actually feasible 
and then approach everybody with the knowledge that um you know this is this is something that that's you know likely to happen um because you know it's fine talking to kind of my peers you know uh, indie founders that are in my network that um you know we we make the decisions completely but when you get to big studios that have or, or any 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 team that has a publisher um right the way through to you know what is in effect huge corporations like ea um you need to um kind of make sure that you're kind of coming across professionally and that this is a likely thing to happen um so that was something that i you know i having never done it before was um it was really cut quite a tricky thing to solve um but i i kind of um spoke with with my valve rep at the time and explained the situation and i said um you know is that sort of thing you'd be open to um to to hosting and and they responded positively um and you know valve will kind of never promise you featuring or or anything like that until much much closer to the time because again they they don't know if you're going to deliver on your side um so um but you know this this very first time we did it um you know we had quite a long runway um i think we had like six months before um the event was actually due to take place so i um i then proceeded to kind of reach out to us uh all of the uh developers and publishers I knew that had a uh, presence on Steam and um, Sam Reed, the, the person on the festival committee that was sort of my, my link to that was um, completely instrumental in that as well because um, there's a lot of like groundwork to, um, you know, find all of the developers and publishers, you know, verify that they have a presence on Steam because, um, you know, there, there's a bunch of old Bullfrog games that are on, say, GOG, but not Steam um and some of those are kind of uh you know part, changed hands over time or kind of uh you know their owners have kind of disappeared um so uh between sam and i we, we basically reached out to everybody um and i don't think there was a single um sort of uh entity that we approached that didn't respond positively which is great um i mean i made sure that we were kind of explaining that hey all you need to do is say yes to participate on the page that's it um because we do everything else you know i i uh, i was setting up the page um so I, I could literally just do it all um and we weren't entirely sure about like um it, we just uh, i guess it was like we didn't know where we stood legally. Like we'd never add a game without um, the, that the owner or the kind of, um, I guess, spokesperson for that game saying yes, it's okay. Um, but uh, we, we were doing that more from like a not a courtesy, but just sort of making sure we we're being um, above board and doing things by the book. Um, we wouldn't want to be in a position where we added a game, say, hadn't sought permission, and then they get in touch and say, "What are you doing? Take the." take us off because that's not very professional um so anyway we we got all of the approvals um started to, to build the page um it's probably a, a a good point actually to um show what last year's page looked like um okay. if you could uh switch streams let me know if that's successful if not i'll just keep going yes it's cool okay good it's going. so um yeah so um uh what you're seeing on screen now is is what last year's festival page looked like um so if you if um uh you know you, you'll see like the lovely artwork which I'll, I'll describe in in a moment but um once we had all of the um permissions for um sort of um you know that the games to have a presence on the page i was then able to kind of structure the page around something that um i thought um would would be good and you know if, if i was entirely selfish i'd go right you know i'll stick my game abandoned ships right at the top um but you know that that's <laughs> that's not very good um 
I, I've seen a couple of festivals. I won't mention any names that have been organised by indies where their games have been more prominent than perhaps they should be. Um, or I've looked at it and gone, yeah, I, I know what you've done there. Um, and it's a little bit kind of, well, it's not okay by my book, but, you know, it is what it is. Um so, um, but yeah, I, I wanted to kind of do things um, as legitimately as possible. So um, if, if you scroll down the page, we, we basically, um, I kind of I divided it into something that was basically the top sellers, which were the biggest games in Guildford. Um, and then kind of the, the more great games in Guildford, which tended to be where the, the indie stuff was. Um, and we had a... a a section that was specifically geared towards uh, VR. Um, so I figured that made sense as kind of partitioning that in a separate area. Um, and then we had the upcoming titles, which were um, basically the, the coming soon games that hadn't been released at that point. So if you scroll back to the top, um, so the way I, I organised this um, was basically uh, based on the volume of user reviews that games had. Um, and, and looking at it through that lens, I was kind of able to go, right, well, you know, if if you've got tens or hundreds of thousands of user reviews, then you should, um, you know, be uh, at, uh, kind of the, the occupy the biggest slots. Uh, and then the next section would be where there's thousands of reviews and then we'd move into sort of hundreds to low thousands of reviews and then everything else basically and just to keep things um fair as well um each sort of subcategory that the page is um is arranged into um you can choose to have those randomized so um you know the the two um the two games at the top no man's sky and two point hospital um uh they would basically uh potentially change positions if you were to kind of force refresh the page um similarly with the, the nine games directly below that um you know every time you refresh the page then they will kind of resort into that little subsection um so that that to me felt like a, a kind of fair way to kind of um to, to to bundle the games um i think there was one exception where um i guess to talk about the elephant in the room was um was goddess um, or, or Goddess Wars, or one of one of the two, where they had loads of, um, you know, they had sort of low thousands of reviews, um, but because they were mostly negative, um, I thought let's not give that too high prominence. We'll kind of put it in with the the other stuff. But that that was the only exception to the the rule of um, you know, volume of user reviews determining where um, the the presence on the the pages that and into subsections that are then randomized that kind of felt fair to me um so yeah um once we had the page um <clears throat> one of the other things that we uh had to do is the artwork so um you know if, if you kind of scroll uh, if you're at the top of the page you'll be able to see um what we went with um we knew we needed artwork for this um again because um really it was just sort of me doing the page with my link to the festival being um sam reed um i said look we'll just use my artist alex she um she can do a great work on the art on, on the artwork for the page um and so you know what are we going to do and for us at the time it kind of felt um uh, really obvious to create something that was um showing kind of local landmarks for Guildford so that um you know if you can type into uh into Google Images Guildford, you know, what are the things that sort of appear? Um if you were a tourist coming to Guildford, um what would you go and see sort of things? Um now, you know, Guildford as a um, you know, it's not Lisbon, right? So it, it's not got kind of like the the um the culture and and, and sites um, to compare with like a major city or capital city um and well it's my hometown so it's you know so for me it's a bit boring really because i see this <laughs> stuff all the time um but you know we thought we'd be true to to where we are so um you know the uh i wouldn't necessarily add guildford as your place to come visit if you're visiting the uk but um 
you know it is a nice town um a short train ride away from um from london and um you know there there is a castle um there's sort of the the surrey hills which are very pretty there is uh, a cathedral um and the, the high street has got a couple of landmarks um alongside it which is sort of like the the building with the clock that you, that you see as well as uh the tunsgate arch which is the kind of um kind of romo greco roman greco-esque uh building on the left um and there's a, a river um a canal running through the middle that has houseboats and uh, you know some some buildings like that there's there's even like a main road that runs through it um that we featured as, as well as the hospital now this is where some of the things uh, that you'll also see on the, the artwork started to creep in because we were like not only should we show guildford as a place um for this this first um steam appearance of the guildford games festival then um we should also sprinkle in some easter eggs for of like guildford's gaming heritage so um we thought that would just be fun and um you know for, for people to go looking then that they can they can find it so um we were like well you know a lot of the criterion games are racing games also we've got motorsport manager so let's put in the main road that runs through guildford with a couple of sports cars and an f1 car going through it um yeah we probably you know it's a main road is is not really an, a compelling feature um and we wouldn't have put that in otherwise but you stick some racing cars on it and then suddenly it's a, a gaming easter egg um you know that there's a bullfrog on in there there's a sword from fable uh the clock face is is the um dark pictures um logo um there's a lion with a nod to lion head um again the hospital guildford hospital we wouldn't have put in there but we've got two point hospital so we can have a nod to that there's a flying carpet um spaceships in the background for no man's sky uh there's the the pyramid from the room um and uh we couldn't resist putting in um, a, a crack and uh, wrestling with uh, one of the bridges in the town centre um, as a kind of uh, nod to the uh, sea monster in abandoned ship. Um, so that was that was like a really fun thing for us to do, and that came together quite quickly. Um, and uh, I felt that it was important to do something like this that kind of looks nice aesthetically as well as kind of um you know had lots of cool little gaming easter eggs um mainly because i knew that you know valve were holding the keys to how successful this would be and um you know if, if we did a really good job on the artwork and that the rest of the page was structured intelligently like they they'd hopefully look at it and go you know what this is um you know this is a really professional outfit and it's really good so um yeah we, we will feature it I can't resist to say the artwork is amazing. Oh, thank you very much. My uh, my artist will be very pleased. She, um, yeah, she is. Uh, uh, and it makes absolutely it, amazing at her job. Makes it much better with the information you just give us to. That means something to Guildford. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's even a, a nod to the because uh, there's a Hollywood sign, but with Guildford instead, I've just um, noticed as well, which is a nod to like the. Um, Hollywood of games thing that I'm not a personal fan of, but you know, um, that is how the, the town is known. Um, so that at this stage, then, um, we kind of had the page, we had the artwork, we had all the participating games. Um, but the next stage of that was that we wanted to, um, you know, have as many of the games as possible go on sale. Um, to coincide with the festival to again kind of feel like um, you know it was a real sort of event um, for, for people um, and remember while I'm doing this while I'm chipping away at this um, the festival committee are, are getting their kind of wealth of video content um, ready so um, uh, for, for those watching that aren't developers on Steam they might not know how um, uh, kind of like the, the discounts work but essentially you choose between ones that um, Valve set up for you, and these are the seasonal sales and, and things like that, um, right the way through to um, custom discounts that you set up because you want to run your own promotion. Um, and there's certain cooldowns on those that mean that um, basically you can't put your game on sale too much. Um, 
and and I think you know in some cases in some countries there's like competition laws that stop you from doing that. So it's not just sort of uh, a rule that's been made up. It's it's a kind of a, a restriction in some areas, I believe. Um, but anyway, so um, I thought if I'm going to get people from like small industries like us through to big corporations to add discounts again it's it's about um just like when i set up the page and was contacting them you know all you have to do is say yes we'll do everything else so um i couldn't do that with the discounts because they have to manually put them in themselves um but i wanted to make it as easy as possible for them still because that would then increase the chance um that the, they discount you know if it was really awkward and loads of barriers um or even just the logistical um you know maybe they'd organize their own custom discount which then meant the cool down hadn't elapsed that they could then discount again for the festival um you know a lot of these companies will have their own strategies for when they want to discount their games so i i asked valve at this point and said would it be possible for you to set us up one um a bit like a seasonal sale that everyone can choose um as an option in the drop down list when they're adding a discount um just to make things as easy as possible and and to coincide everything um and valve have very kindly said yes to that um so again you know sam and i emailing all our contacts saying you know if if you want to uh, discount your game then um this is the steps to do it and yeah we made it clear that you know discounting your game wasn't going to affect your participation um, or it wasn't going to affect your placement on the page um, again, again just trying to be sort of um, you know as, as fair as, as possible really um, and apart from people messaging us to say that they'd done it um, you know only Valve could see who had discounted so it, it wasn't really until the festival went live um, I mean Valve, Valve gave me a heads up about who was discounting and how much but um you know for, for everyone else it wasn't until the sale went live that we saw how uh, many games are discounted and, and things like that so all of the pieces of the puzzle are kind of falling into place here and, and the reason why i called the the talk um herding cats is because um i don't know if i've given the the sense of that's how it was you know i may have may have sounded uh quite quite easy it was not um it was very time consuming and um there was a lot of moving pieces and kind of uh you know that the herding cats aspect kind of was was kind of corralling all these these sort of devs and studios and publishers in, into the kind of this this one moment um so it was it was really hard uh, a lot of work um and it was lovely seeing the page come together you know every, every time somebody came back say yes we're on the page or yes we're discounted it was like yes good good because it, it's all contributing to kind of um this this moment where when everything was done and and uh you know with a, a suitable run runway before the event i kind of then went back to valve and said you know the the page is done um what do you think do you have any feedback um is it possible to to get some sort of featuring um and that that was really important to me because um you know that that makes the difference between um you know the, the event um you know it would no doubt have a bigger reach being on steam um just because people would would come across it when they visit um individual pages on on steam there'd be the banner for the guildford games festival across the top um so you know that would draw people in and obviously a game like no man's sky gets massive amounts of page traffic you know um at an indie level it's not going to contribute that much but you know, EA games, No Man's Sky, they, they would. Um, so that would maybe lift it from, you know, tens or, uh, you know, thousands of views on, on Twitch for our, the content, the video content that's been filmed through to, you know, maybe, you know, certainly tens, maybe 100,000 views from, from Steam. So, but I knew that featuring would really make a difference because I'd seen it on a abandoned ship in the past. Um you know, when, when we've had daily deals appear on the front page, the, the muscle that being on the front page brings is unbelievable. Um, and Val very kindly, um, you know, look, looked at the page and said, yes, um, 
will be able to do something there. Um, and in the end, we had what's called a weekend deal. Um, so it ran basically over the weekend where we had a, a capsule on on the front page, which um, if you're on Steam and you scroll down um, past the first few sort of areas, you'll you'll get to like this sort of, I think they're called deals um, section. Um, it's not the first thing you see when you load up Steam, but it's sort of not, I think as you scroll down just a tiny bit, you, you'll see it there. And that's basically a carousel of, of um, some things that they're featuring. Uh, you know, those might be daily deals and weekend deals and cross publisher sales and things like that. So, um, and that kind of rotates based on, you know, when you um, load up the page. And uh, so we were there for, for the entire weekend. And, um, you know, we made sure that all of this awesome content that had been filmed by the, um, the, the main festival um, was being broadcast onto the Steam page as well. Um, so, you know, we've got to the point now where everything's been set up. Um, you know, we've, we've got the featuring, which is a, a, a major breakthrough. Um, and so we could kind of then see how successful it was. And, and there's just, um, you know, there was ways during the weekend that we could tell that instantly it was a success. Um, because the viewer numbers on on the broadcast were, you know, tens of thousands of people at a time. Um, uh, sorry, th thousands and low tens of thousands, um, depending on peaks of traffic. Um, and some of the games um, that were in uh, on the page were like straight into like um, the, the, into the charts and, and things like that. So. Um, you know, I talk about the, the muscle of being on the front page. It was really gratifying to see all of the kind of the hard work come to fruition on that. And and one of the things I really liked as well, and, um, you know, speaking to people that, that had videos, um, was that, you know, the, the festival committee worked really hard to make this really awesome content. And it was seen on Twitch and got, you know, really decent viewing figures on Twitch um but the moment it was on steam suddenly that's being lifted to being seen you know globally by so many more people so it was really nice to see that their hard work was then getting enjoyed by a lot more people too um so that that was a, a really nice nice feeling um but yeah um kind of uh looking back once the the weekend was over and and I was sort of keeping track of stats as we were going and, and stuff like that. Um, that, um, yeah, like the, the kind of original goals I had, um, you know, just, just to recap those, it was, you know, shine a spotlight on, on the, shine a spotlight on the local scene. Um, you know, give a tangible benefit to, to developers and, and publishers that participate in this page. Um, that happened because you know their sales and wishlist numbers went up through all of the extra visibility. Um, you know, wanted it to to provide a bonus to us uh, as well. So you know, obviously that that visibility resulted in us um, you know benefit uh, benefiting from it as well. Um, and that included wishlists for our um, our upcoming game as well. So um, the whole event really was a massive success and. And it, it, I think a couple of people in the the festival committee that um, were kind of just letting us do our thing with the Steam page. Um, when they saw the numbers, they were like, "You know, wow! You know, actually, that's um, that's a massively important component of the festival that's kind of really lifted it beyond what we were aiming for." So they made last year's festival, um, you know, felt like the, the the previous years had been massively successful. This the that twenty uh, twenties version was at a different level because of uh, the, the Steam featuring. So um, it's just really good that everybody had their hard work rewarded in that sense. Um, but yes, some of the the stats um, that uh, we um, that I was collating as as we were going along. Um, so um, as well as broadcasting the festival content, um, we had. Uh, those were kind of occupying the top slots and um 
but below those on the on the broadcast would be individual games that were broadcast into their page. So, um, you know, I, I ran the abandoned ship broadcast um, on a loop for 119 hours, um, and the the peak viewers we received for that was uh, 6,435. Um, but the unique viewers across the weekend were like uh, 680,000, which is you know, great, great numbers to have um, basically seeing our, our game. Um, so um, the unfortunately Valve um, didn't have data to show the impressions that the page um, that the page capture received on, on the front page of Steam. But the Guildford game page um, we could see that um, you know it had been uh, you know um, a, a combination of the, the stats for the the visits to that page as well as the views on the the broadcast um, content meant that um, you know we, we basically had between two and two and a half million visitors to the page, um, and those are all people that would have seen the broadcast content that the festival had made, um, you know. Potentially then funneled through into to other games pages to to buy them and or wishlist them or whatever. So, you know, two to two and a half million people visiting a page is is a lot of muscle that um, lots of uh, teams like like us just can't manage on our own um, unless you get that sort of featuring. So um, it was really really like a a, a big success for us. Um, and um yeah we could see um you know multiple um instances of of where um you know i think at one point we had um let me see if i can find the actual data but um uh bear with me one second yeah here it is so um i manually went through and counted at various times um the top 500 positions of the global top sellers chart while the festival was running and um at one point there was 17 games from the page um in the top 500 um which is not bad considering there's sort of i think like 45 titles um that, that released um and uh yeah the the highest spots um need for speed heat reached sixth um and no man's sky reached 10th in the global top sellers chart which is you know, um, they're, they're big games that are successful anyway. So, you know, we all know Steam's very much like the more successful you are, the more successful you, you are sort of thing. Um, but, you know, um, there was a lot of games, including ours, that, that were in that um, uh, top 500 um, for the global top sellers chart. And um, it's actually slightly better than that because... Um, there was one game between position 401 and 500. Um, there was actually 16 titles that are in the top 400, which is um, so a slightly better metric as well. So, um, and although people don't tend to disclose actual sales figures, um, we know like that basically meant everybody that participated in the page benefited more than if they had not participated, and and that really for for me was what it was all about um you know a, a real tangible benefit to people you know that that's hard to kind of um th those sort of things don't come along very often um and all they had to do was say yes to be part of the page can i make a, that, a question yeah, gary yep yeah, sure um a company like yours um could you find such a, a traffic anywhere else could you afford to have this massive a number numbers of traffic uh, usually Basically, no. Um, you know, we don't have a marketing budget that could could bring that sort of numbers in. Um, the only way we can get it is through, um, you know, uh, like I say, when, when we've had daily deals in the past, um, that has bought that level of traffic. Um, but again, that's that's through the the placement on the front page. We we couldn't at our level achieve that um, on our own. Um, so I mean uh, that that's everything I had to kind of talk about um, the the festival, um, and I, I like the title "Herding Cats" because you know living it was 
very much uh, feeling like it was herding cats. But um, I'm happy to answer any any questions if um, any come up. Okay, I, I think that was it, the question for now. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh... what, how about you? Because you're, um, you're obviously organizing something yourself. I mean, as, as anything I've been saying kind of been ringing true for yeah, you? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's... Um, I, I really enjoyed the, your title because Herding Cats, it's great for the, the feeling it is uh, sometimes to, to pull all together. Well, you have a, a great advantage when you are doing this because you also have a game that was featured... Yeah. which is not my case for example I'm just doing it out of fun but um, this year we, we are starting to approach Steam and it's um, it's something massive uh, as you said I mean yeah, you run us through this yeah so um, I mean that Valve are very aware and don't particularly like or I get the sense that they don't particularly like the fact that everyone's uh, at the indie levels, basically trying to like uh, you know game the system and you know uh, how does the algorithm work? You know how can we take advantage of the algorithm? Because um, their their approach is just just make a good game, market it, and then the rest will take care of itself. Which you know is is fair enough. I get that, but we're all trying to um, you know pay the bills basically and keep on making games. So. Um, you know they're very aware that these these cross publisher sales like this are very common um and they get a lot of requests for them and so they can sort of afford to be a bit um guarded about who um and when they do these sorts of things so it was really important to them for example that we had a load of um like broadcast quality content that we could show um, because again, it just makes it feel like a, a real professional thing. Um, I, I've, I know of other developers that have just like tried to band together something that's, um, you know, potentially a, like a quite flimsy excuse, and it hasn't. They might have had a page, but had no featuring, or they might have just been told no because, um, you know, Valve are like, well, what what value is this offering to players? Um, and also sometimes um, these ideas. Um, basically overlap with things that they're planning for example i um i was like why well, banner chips a pirate game there's an international pirate uh, talk like a pirate day like that would be a great idea for a, a sale and I, I reached out um to them and, and said like is like is this something that could work like i'll, I'll put the legwork in to kind of reach go and speak to other developers that have got pirate games um and they were like we're already planning something like this so um don't worry about it and uh yeah september of last year they did a a pirate themed sale and um again that was um that was even more successful um for us than the guildford games festival was because the guildford games festival is a bunch of um you know the, the link is that all these games are made in guildford um but there's like loads of different types of games whereas the the pirate sale the valve put on it's a really clear theme so, uh, you know, if you like pirate games, that's what you're going to be interested in. Pinpoints your audience immediately. Exactly. So, so I saw that the kind of like the conversions through to, to wishlist and sales were, were higher, even though the, the kind of, I, I assume the visibility um, was, was roughly the, the same um, from what I've seen. Um, I'm kind of, I, although I didn't have the data for um, Valve's pirate page, I could kind of extrapolate from seeing what visits we got and impressions we got from uh, for, for abandoned ship, um, and they were, they were kind of roughly similar. Um, but of course, the conversion was higher because people visiting it were into pirate games, so they were in the right place. Of course. Um, whereas the Guildford thing's a bit more kind of uh, scatter shot. You know, people don't go, "I'm into games from Guildford," but they do go, "I'm into pirate games." So, uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's just one thing you you touch a, a point there because um, for what I see, indies um, do struggle with with marketing and um, yeah. I, I think these opportunities are great because many people, many studios, 
they can make the game, but they don't have the know-how. Sometimes they do not have the funds to to put it out there. And um, if you do not do so today, the market is so big that you are lost in the in the ocean. Yeah, it's um, it's really scary, um, and it's like a, a never-ending fight. Really, I, I would say. So I I don't have a background in marketing, um, but I did identify like this is something we need to do. Um, we need to tell people about our game, and and um, I've worked very hard on doing that. Um, and uh, yeah, once once our announcement trailer for Century is ready, I'll commence that kind of fight for attention again. But I am worried because you know years have passed since we announced Abandoned Ship. And the market's just got more saturated. There's so much content out there continuously coming that, you know, we've all got huge backlogs. So, you know, what what is it about your game that's going to make people play it instead of all the awesome games that constantly get discounted or they're already in their backlog or in um, uh, free and games pass on the Epic Game Store or something like that. So I, I think it's a combination of you've got to make something that people are going to want um, that's not kind of already out there um and you've got to shout about it because it can be as good as 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 possible but if people don't know about it um and i'd say if if you don't have the skill set um personally or in your team to be able to do that then that is something that that is a problem you need to solve just like um you know if you can't code and you wanted to make a game you'd probably get somebody who could code on your team uh it's the same with marketing so yeah whether that's hiring somebody that is um burst of that stuff or hiring a firm or signing up with a publisher who has a department that will handle that sort of thing um that really is a question that only um you can answer but it's definitely needed yeah i'm anxious to see where the road takes us in this regard yeah well um you know, it, it's very, very hard. Um, but then if it was easy, every, everybody would be doing it. Um, yeah, for sure. But it's, you know, I think, you know, most people that make games, particularly indie games, they know that unless they're part of the 0.001%, that they're not going to get rich from it. But it's a lifestyle choice. You know, we could all go and work in a bank in the city and get big bonuses and, and loads of money, but that'd be boring i think like you get one life right so if you're going to spend that much of it working it better damn well be something that you enjoy because i can't think of anything worse like um yeah just uh, making games is, is fun and i want to keep doing it as long as possible oh that's nice so gary we're we are through our time um, thank you very much for this great talk. Um, this was really enlightening in so many ways. Um, and I hope to see you soon in a real life event, which is a bit yeah. different. I enjoy. Yeah, I love to. I love to come in over and meeting um, you and the rest of the team, the Index team. When um, I think it was 2018. Yeah, uh, but you were very welcoming. Um, and um, yeah, it was, it was lovely to meet you all. Yeah, I hope. Um, the event is a massive success. Thank you. Thank you very much. So join us again at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. GMT. We'll be back with another great talk, this time with Isaac Sanchez. Thank you and see you later.